The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Everyone, this is Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 20th of, um, 20th of, what are we doing in May? And we're looking at the Dow up 35, this is the Dow Futures at 40,172, 40,358 in the Futures is needed, uh, actually 59 is needed to go to a, a new all-time high, but we are already in leg D. Remember in the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for four higher peaks. Uh, the high on Thursday was uh, 40,191. High on Friday was 40,147. And this morning, we've gotten to 40,194. We have begun leg D. <clears throat> if you're looking at the weekly chart, we have not yet. We've got the cup formation. We haven't yet tested that left side high. If you're looking at the monthly chart of the YM, it's in leg C. Now, that's interesting. Why? Because the cash in the monthly chart is in leg D. And that means we've got a very quick peak C. One month, uh, one, that's one bar, one month with a lower high. And we had a huge green candle so far this month. It doesn't matter where it closes. It's already started a leg D in the monthly chart. Leg E in the uh, weekly chart. And if it gets to 40,052 today, uh, to be exact, it is 40,051.05. All right. Now, what's interesting is that the diamonds, the DIA, had an all-time high at 401.00. We had a round number in an index. That's really unusual. <clears throat> That was on uh, that was on Thursday. Friday was a lower high, so that's peak C, uh, 401.01 starts at leg D. What does D mean? I'll go through that in a moment. Let me just get to the S and P futures. S and P futures haven't yet made a new uh, recovery high above the Thursday high, which was at 33.48. Point. No, did I miss that? Zero, zero, 349.00. 0, 0. Well, it has to go one uh, one tick above that, and that starts leg D. The all-time high, uh, this is in the futures, was back on uh, at 33, 33.50 back on the 1st of April. But the S&P cash, and the reason why I'm taking a little time here is it means the objective in a Chapman Wave buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode is to get you to at least, or not you, but the price, to at least D. That's where other things can happen. That's where you have to assess, reassess, analyze, look at the various indicators and see if you're about to get some kind of a sharper pullback. And look, look what happened here in the S&P. It went to a peak, actually a peak F at 5264.85. We're already above that. We've gone to 53.25.49. That was on Thursday. Friday was the lower high. Now, this is what's so interesting. We're already at a peak E. Now, there are, there are other complications in terms of just making a straightforward statement. Why? Because there's a Chapman wave. There we go. Right there. Instant restart. Possibility that at that peak D, that fourth highest peak that was made uh, earlier last week or was it the end of la the week before, and that's always circled. So now what you do is you have an alternative count, and that says there's a possibility you go even higher. I'm just going to do this very quickly. Look, the NQ, which is the NASDAQ, has gone to a peak D. This is the E-mini NASDAQ 100 continuous contract. That's in a leg D in the monthly chart. It's gone to a leg F in the um, weekly chart, and the daily is at a peak C. But look here, yeah, this is a QQQ. This is already at a peak E, a little bit ahead in the notation of the Chapman wave. And if you're looking at the technicals, what I'm going to point out in all of these cases is that the stochastic is up in the 95 or 96% area and flat. 
that is very bullish. So I don't want to get ahead of this whole thing. I'm just saying in the Chapman Wave Notation, this is what we look for. Even more important is that if you look at the IWM, the Russell 2000, it has been lagging. It's done very well. Um, and it's trading well under the 211.88 high that was made back in uh, back in early April. And now what we're looking at is you've already got to a peak E at 209.77. And the reason why I'm making a big deal about this is that the, the Russell 2000 ETF has actually run it quite well. Not yet fantastically, but quite well. And that's the small caps. And I'm just going to put this together. Look, if you look at the financial uh, S&P, Select Financial Spider Fund, only in leg C in the daily, leg D in the weekly, and the leg C in the monthly. Look at this. I'm talking about lagging indicators. So you've got the, the S&P doing very well, all-time highs or almost at all-time highs. And the Russell 2000, the laggards, doing okay, but not yet uh, running to the extent that it should. Well, in the S&P, Select Financial uh, regional banking ETF, uh, you've got peak E in the daily. This is KRE is the symbol. This is the S&P regional banking ETF, which I think is it's really important to see this really strongly, um, is lagging quite a lot. It's done very nicely from the 45.45 low of the 16th of April, going to uh, 51, six points is about what, 12%. But look at this, the, the weekly and the monthly are lagging. So what I'm trying to point out here is we don't have synchronicity to say, oh, man, uh, everything's moving. They're not all moving. But now let's go to this. If you're looking at the gold, gold made a new recovery high. And uh, it's trading now up nine at 2,426.6. It did a fabulous overnight rally to 2454.2. It's in a leg E in the weekly chart a leg B in the monthly chart. And if you look at the GDX, which is the gold miners, I personally happen to like gold miners leading gold. <laughs> Otherwise, you've got something that, to me, is just a little bit lopsided. Uh, it's like the, 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 the tail wagging the dog. Um, now what we're looking at is the GDX is already in leg D in the daily. That's the gold miners vectors uh, ETF. Leg E in the weekly chart and finally, we got the little uh, we got this little push above this inside track repellent line that started at 45.78 back in August of 2020, uh, slumped down to the low 20s, and then had a pretty good rally. And now, for the very first time, it has popped over this line. The month has still got a way to go before it wraps up. Will gold push sharp into the, the GDX? Will the GDX rally sharp into the 30? 38 area, preferably 40. Uh, we, we don't know. Look at silver. Silver is trading very well. This is a different chart. Look at that. This is way stronger in the in the monthly chart, way stronger in the weekly chart. Have we gone to a leg E and only a leg C in the daily chart? Silver is very strong at 31.47, up 22 cents. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, early edition. This is 8.14 a.m. in the morning. It'll be replayed. You'll get this at 10.14 uh, 40, uh, when it's replayed. But at this point, the mini is up and the Dow is up. I'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Keckstadt releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. 
This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On this uh, Monday, the 20th of May, we're looking at uh, the e mini futures. I was asked if I could do this quick because the market is starting. But uh, early morning, this is uh, pre open, an hour be uh, just over an hour before the open. So, this is what I'm looking at here. Look, I, I always discuss that in the futures, at the, at the usually around about the four o'clock close on the previous day, going into that night. And then going even sometimes all the way into the next morning, you could have a really narrow trading range. I call it the narrow rectangle formation. There's a whole bunch of uh, technique, uh, technical uh, strictures that I have, what you look for, etc. But most importantly, what I'm going to show you, this is the five. Yep, this is the five-minute chart of the E-mini. So I'm notating here with Chapman Wave peaks from the lowest low. That's it, where that up arrow is. A, B, C, D, E, right there. Has it gone to an F? Yep, it just, uh, yep, it just snapped to an F. Now, what we're looking at is this narrow range that went from about 53.36 in the E-mini down to, oh, I'd say, what was it, 53.51-ish? I mean, that's a really, <laughs> that's, that's nothing. Let me just double check that I mentioned the right price oh, that low over there. Uh, 53, yeah, 32. So it's 32, 31, went right to the 200 period exponential moving average. And this started around here. I have a whole rule of thumb that says if it goes underneath the halfway marker of a long, narrow rectangle range, expect that if it gets to the top, it could then start a pullback. If it breaks that midpoint uh, range, it can go underneath. And then what happens, it has a retest of that. Uh, midpoint line. Let me just put that in right here. I'll do that there. Make it right there. Uh, that midpoint line. If it closes above it, uh, be be prepared that it can go all the way through to the top part. And this time it could break out. And if it breaks out and holds above it, that becomes a support line and not a support level. And that's where we are right now. And I'm anticipating there's a chance that early in the morning we get the sudden spike. The Dow doesn't have to go very much high to make its leg D. And at that point, what we'd be looking for is what happens next. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, oh, we're anticipating some kind of a pullback. Something's going to happen here. But I have to warn you that, well, first of all, this is done in the 10-minute chart. It's gone to another leg D, and that's above the trend line. But that trend line uh, says until you start to trade Quite, quite sharply above, it's, it's a viable cushion. And 
support line. If you go above it, then the upper level, which is at 53.36 of the E-mini futures, becomes a support line, but you've got to get somewhere to the 53.40 level. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about that. Why? Because for my subscribers to my opening call, we are preparing that there's a possibility this week that we make some kind of a, a short-term top. And the reason why I say that, let me just get to this. Let me just go through a whole bunch of things and then I'll talk about it. Um, if you go to the SMHs, that's the semiconductors, and you know, I've spoken about this just forever, that the semiconductors really rule. They are the ones that lead the market up, they lead the market down invariably. It can happen that they don't, but most of the time where the semis go, the SMHs, the Van X Semiconductor ETF, that's where the trend of the market is. Well, the semiconductors haven't gone back to the 239.14 all-time high. It was made back in March. Well, if that's the case, um, you've got to be looking at stocks like NVIDIA. And I, I'm going to just mention this as I always do. NVIDIA, round number high, all-time high of 974.00. We saw the diamonds actually made, the Dow diamonds, the other day made a round number 401.00. I consider it a warning sign of some kind of reversal coming on, especially if there are a couple of them, or in an index that never does that, or a stock that never does that. Well, NVIDIA hardly ever does that, and all of a sudden it goes to 974.00 on the week of the 10th of March, pulls back very sharply, and what does it do? There were other round numbers. I'm just talking about the high. The actual high, after all this time, I mean, going down from 100 to 700 and then 800, and then 974.00. Well, look what happens. It goes to a low of 756.56 on the 19th of April. And what does it do? It closes at a round number, a round number 762. And now it's trading this morning up 11 at 935.50. It hit the 950s the other day. So this is just going to be so important. Does it fail to make a new high? And that's a warning sign. Well, wait a minute. There's, there are other stocks in this, not in the same category, but in the category of high tech or tech that was doing extremely well. Yes, MicroStrategy Inc., this is data accessibility, makes a 1999.99 all-time high. Missed the round number 2,000 by penny, but that same day, the 27th of March, it is a 1953.00 open and a 1942.00 low. Ha-ha. Then what does it do? It has a 10, 10, 1,010.00 round number low um, in May, and now it's rallying. And it's gone to this morning, it's up 15 at 15.99, right? Um, isn't that fascinating? And then what was the other one? SMCI. Uh, SMCI is a super micro cell service solutions architecture, high power AI computing. It has a round number 129.00, all time high with a, in the weekly chart, it even had a round number with a. To 1,039 open the week of the 8th of March, comes down to what? Comes down to 671.00, round number low on the 21st of April, and now it's had a pretty decent rally. Uh, it, it's already gone to the 960 uh, area. <clears throat> so this this is all telling me that we're in an area, we're in a, uh, a, a moment of... Uh, elucidation, let's just put it. What, what happens over the next few days going into Wednesday, NVIDIA's earnings report is going to be extremely important. That's why I don't want to get ahead of it because I suspect there's some buying, buying coming in for NVIDIA at least until Wednesday, maybe before the close it pulls back and then something happens after the close. We don't know. It's just guesswork, right? So I'm saying I'm getting ready for subscribers. We, we've been long. Uh, very long for long term. In the Dow, we added a, a really nice trading position recently, but I am prepared to make some kind of slow uh, switch to the short side, but I, the way I'm going to do it is going to be uh, foretold by market conditions. Okay, I'm done with that. Now, the other thing we have to look at because it's so important. Well, let me go to high-grade copper first. High-grade copper has had a spectacular move down just a couple of pennies today, but it has made a leg D in the daily. It has made a leg D in the weekly. It has made a leg D in the monthly. So I'm just saying 
those, that doesn't mean to say, oh, my God, jump out the window. It says, be aware that you've got an instant restart back in mid, mid, uh, April, around about the 4.4 area, and it's had a great move up. And just on a purely um, notational basis, the on-balance volume is very overbought. The, the stochastics already start to pull back. So the divergence here, the MAC is stronger than I previously ever is strong, so we must watch copper. I'm just going to add, as we go to the break, the bonds. Well, I can't do that, I think, at the time. It's really quick. We go to bonds, and bonds are up a little bit. They are up. No, now they're down. They're down 8.30 seconds. I'll be back. That's what's happening. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Now, here's the plumb line. That means you go to the left side, see an arch or a cup formation, and you see if there's a measured move. In other words, the, I call it the left side, right side price time match. Well, if you go to the low in the TBT, which is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF, and you go to the, this little low right here, and that's on the 4th of April at 34.16, that's 3.4. A one six percent probably if you just had a, a related to yields, and then you go to this particular low right here, the low of Friday, which is a tad above. That was at thirty four point thirty eight, just a little bit above, and you put in the chapel wave inside wedge, and then you do the chapel wave 
dashed line, pink going down, dash pink, dash green going up, you'll see that there's a really good chance that this particular little ictus, this little turning point right here, that is the potential. And that's why I'm saying this is a very important week because um, yields were coming down and then all of a sudden uh, you got some kind of uh, little hiccup there that said, oh, I'm kind of stalling here and is stalling at support. Look at this chap wave inside track propellant line that's the red one the green one is the inside track propellant zone giving you the range that says every time it gets there does it rally it's a rising trend line i'd say that this angle is maybe what 18 degrees or something like that um and what it says is if that nine period moving average in the weekly chart of the tbt ultra short lehman 20 year treasury bond etf still green if it turns pink it means that these yields are going a lot lower but if it stays green it means that there's a hint it's a weekly chart things can change you can watch the daily chart this is the one right here in the daily chart the MACD is very weak the relative gray line the relative strength index very weak the on balance volume had a little bit of a rally but it gets down and the stochastic is making a W formation at 10% that's equivalent of 80% if you're uh, 90% if you're in the upside or well, 80% says there's weakness and it says that the stochastic would probably have to rally over the next going into early next week Monday or Tuesday oh is there a holiday yep yeah. well whatever it is early next week Tuesday uh, up in the 18%, 20% area for, for you to get real strength in the TBT yields to be rallying strongly. So it just says that you've got a mixed picture, weakness in the daily chart, strength in the weekly chart, strength in the monthly chart. So I'm, I'm just saying the, the evidence is out um uh, you just have to piece it together. You've already got a peak D. Remember, peak D is where other things can happen, the Chapman Wave methodology. And the inside track on the TLT, that's the iShares 20-year Treasury Bond ETF. That's the bullish side of, of bonds, uh, weak side of yields. Look at this. You're on the inside track, and it's pink. So uh, there's a lot going on. You've got the semis at a point where there's, there's potential resistance that it could turn down. You've got NVIDIA with earnings. That's, that's, I'd say that's the big dog. That's the one that really is going to tell us a great deal. And if let's just do a little bit of work here uh, on NVIDIA to say, look, peak E with the nine period moving average way over the 14, you've got an early morning pre-open uh, rally of 12 points at 9.37. Um, We'll have to we'll have to assess as we get there. But the high that was weighed at nine hundred and fifty seven eight, yep, nine fifty eight point nineteen back on the sixteenth of uh, May. Uh, if that's pierced and then it's held in the next two days, it means you have to to get that nine period moving average to turn pink, in other words negative you'd probably have to see a really disappointing interview. And I, I anticipate with all the expectations, I I would not be surprised if expectations have really gotten very strongly ahead of NVIDIA's price. That's I'm thinking. But the reality is you've got to look at the price movement. And the price, yes, is re daily chart, very strong. Um, Back to stochastic relative strength, uh, on balance volume has pulled back a little bit with that move down on Friday, but it's still good. Weekly chart, if you had to do a measured move from the high that was made the week of, uh, that's I think March, yep, March the 6th, where it hit 974.00, that was the high. Oh, I've got it all typed in already. Um, look, the MACD was very strong. The stochastic was turning down, but it was still very strong in the 85% area. The, the unbalanced volume was strong. And now when you measure it, there's weakness here in the MACD. There's weakness in the uh, stochastic at 73%. Uh, my suspicion is that if we're looking at a week's time from today, a Monday a week, that there's a chance that NVIDIA is actually trading under 900 and I might be wrong, but I'm just saying there's a chance. But to get a negative so that you don't get your PD, uh, you, know, you have to wait a while. Um, that's, that means that this 
price would have to probably go under the 762, uh, 756 low of uh, the 19th of April. And that's, that's going to take a lot of work. So that means that the monthly chart would then, if there's no new high above 974 by, by Thursday, because Wednesday night's the uh, earnings and the, uh, and the call that they make, um, I'm just going to say, we're looking, I'm expecting in 2024, a leg D above 974, and then we'll watch and see what happens. Okay, a couple of questions that I got over the weekend. Uh, let me do them one at a time. Yes, ITB. ITB is the iShares U.S. Home Construction ETF. Well, it made a high. I should have typed it into the weekly chart. I didn't finish up because I had lost the data and I had to redo it. It didn't take me long, but I had to redo it. And that high that was made on the 28th of April at 160.34. Uh, we're trading right now at 108. That's eight points lower. <clears throat> and it's a peak F in the weekly chart. It's already a leg D in the monthly chart. I'm looking at this and I, uh, I'm telling you, XLB, is that the one I want you to look at? XLB. I uh, lost the notation. No, I didn't. There it is. Made a peak E. My 92.31 was the XLB, which is the uh, S&P Select Materials ETF. Well, that high hasn't been surpassed, but it's still very close to that high. It is a leg C in the monthly chart right there above the 92.31 January 2022 high that slumped down to the 67 area. And then it came all the way back, went to a new high. It went to 90, what did I say? Did I say? No, yes, I did. Uh, 93.72 last month. <clears throat> what you, if it goes to 92.73 this month, that just extends the XC. It means you can't get to a D until later on in 2024. But I'm trying to put this package together and over the weekend. What I was looking at was when you look at the home builders, let's just go to Toll Brothers. Toll Brothers, all time high just uh, three days ago, above 135. Um, you look at these charts and say that is fantastic action. So there's still demand for housing. So I'll put this I'll, I'll put the little package together as soon as we return. Basil Chapman, 8.38 in the morning, AM, early edition. And I'll just see what the e many futures are. Now these futures are up, up five. The gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. 
For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman, early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at this at 842 a.m. Um, this is the Bitcoin. Bitcoin is down 257,165 in the daily chart. You can see it's, it's a potential cup formation. But what I do is I like to be prepared. And I always say, when you're just starting off a turn that looks, and it's amazing how markets do this. Look at this. Doesn't this look like a beautiful potential cup formation? And look, the MACD is starting to improve. Stochastics at 87% under. Uh, um, no, it's above the previous high when it went to that high back in April. Um, the stochastic is important because if we can hold here at the 87% level, that's good. But that on balance volume is weak. It's it's lagging. And the relative strength is holding very nicely. It's lower than it was before, but it's still moving up higher highs and higher lows. That's important. The nine period moving average a few days ago crossed positive. I don't see the power just yet. I think it's in a, it's in a sideways consolidation in a spectacular move up into the 75,000s and now it is at 67,000 it's kind of going sideways so what I'd like to do is I say just very lightly I put in a kind of a cup formation and then ab ab above it I put the potential for an arch and there's two now there are two fighting patterns the one is bullish the other is potentially not bearish but just saying you're not going anywhere you're going sideways more like a rectangle formation but you've also got an inverted uh, head and shoulders pattern. So the bias says that at this particular point, there is strength in the technicals. The price is not reflecting it that much, but it is, it's is—it's good so far. And the weekly chart's making lower lows and high, lower highs. Just make it as simple as that. Look, high, low, lower high, lower low, high, uh, and a, a lower low. In, in leg C makes a trough C. And if you're looking at this beautiful cup formation that I drew in with the Chapman wave, this is now, you can't call this a plumb line. Plumb line is usually a, 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 a perfect left side, right side price time match. It says that this low will equal from the high, the number of bars going to the low will match the number of bars going to the high. But if it doesn't look like it's going to work, you, you, you don't want to put that in. You want to be flexible. So the trend line that I would use, and I'll draw this in, which would be right there, that's not going to work. Uh, even when we were over there, I was saying, ah, once you once you make that little sideways move, you have to move your your plumb line. That's the midpoint. So I've moved the plumb line. Actually, that's not vertical. That's vertical. There it is. Sector, yes. So I've moved the plumb line to there, to that peak. I have a particular methodology that I use. And so to this doji, the smallest candle right there. And if you do that, it goes to exactly uh, three months ago, it goes to the high. And that became this technically because it never took out the starting point of 12,280 back in December of 2018 when it went to that peak D. If it was a peak C, I'd say it pulled back sharply, but it's still this new high over here could become a continuation pattern. But once you get to a D, the sharp pullback means that this is a brand new start to the upside. So peak A, peak B, I'm calling this a C and I'm saying in 2024, we should see if I did a time price match, I would say 
by late summer, maybe early fall, we should see a move to the uh, 75,200, what was I can't remember offhand, 75,000, oh, 795, all right? So 75,800, uh, boom, that takes you to a new uh, all-time high, and that's what I think will happen here. It could happen sooner, I'm just saying, this is a, a cup formation, it's a little lopsided, but at the same time, you could get a handle, and it depends if... If the Bitcoin futures start to trade above 70,000 and close there even one day above that level, I'm saying there's a good chance in this shorter time frame you can go back to an all-time high. But if it starts to stall and you're looking at it a week from today without going above, um, without closing above 70,000, say 200, and it's just stalled here, then I think the stalling pattern says you could actually have a pullback and have to wait for Bitcoin to get going again. And we also, you've seen a rotation in the uh, for the, the real players. They've moved from Bitcoin to gold. Now gold's taken its place. Bitcoin stalling, this is the same rotation that I always look at in gold and silver. Gold gets, gets a big move up. Silver looks around and says, oh, wait for me. Silver plays catch up. Gold takes a rest. And then all of a sudden, they both have a little bump to the upside. And then it's all over. They take a deep breather. That's how it used to be. Is that pattern going to change? Well, we'll see. And if you look at a lot of the gold stocks, I mean, look at this. You want mining. Oops. There we go. So we, we chose. I chose a silver stock for our portfolio. Um, it's doing very nice, very nicely. But if you look at something like a Newmont Mining, well, this, is really, this is one of the biggies in, in, the, in the gold silver area. So Newmont Mining trading right now up 21 cents at 43.95. Lovely move in the daily, stalled a little bit here, made a cup formation, should go to 39.99. <clears throat> well, it's gone high, it's gone to 43.95. So this is essentially a brand new uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, but actually pick up that last one, you can call it a D, but it's only a C in the weekly chart. Well, look at the monthly, 86.37 back in April of 2022. It slumps and it goes down to about 30 and now it's at 43. This is like nothing. If gold is going to have a huge move up, you would anticipate that Newmont Gold Miners, a Newmont Corporation Gold Mine, uh, would at least get a 50% rally. Well, that takes you to almost 60. So I'm watching this very closely because if we get a rotation to a whole new sector, uh, even if it's a split sector with gold and silver, you can even put copper into that. Um, wow, those those metals going higher, that's a whole new trading ball game. That means Bitcoin can take a breather right now because the players are in this area. Like, I needed to get to crude oil. Crude oil is trading. It's, it's kind of weak when you think of what's going on in the Middle East and with the, with the shipping and all that of crude oil. Looks down at 79.19, down 39 cents, hitting the 200 period moving average, trying to rally off it but not doing very much. <clears throat> I'm suggesting to you that crude oil, just at the moment, it looks to me like crude oil is a laggard and it'll stay a laggard a little longer. So now I want you to do this. Look, here's the dollar, TXY. Dollar's up 13 ticks at 104.58, rounding off its 200 pre moving average. It always does that. It does, loves to go and test it and then push higher. So let's see if it can get to the 104.82 level. That would say that gold might stall, but they're actually in two different worlds right now. The, the, the implication is that gold, that the dollar is the currency of importance. It's pulling back. And this particular point, the euro is at a very, very nice rally. Euro is in a, at a PD, um, having gone from the 1.06 area to the 1. Oh, did I say OC? Yeah, 1.06 to 1. 1.08, 1.085 right now. Um, now it's just a fraction, but it may be PD. There's a storm actually that's going to be
the gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. So what we're looking at here is the E-mini. Remember I spoke about this uh, long, the, the technique that I have for the uh, long narrow rectangle, that it has to go sharply above the upper rectangle high. If it does that, then what we're looking at is you've created a, a different base. But if it only sneaks above and goes to a D, E, or F, and then comes back and takes out, this, as I said, this long blue midpoint line at about 5, 3, 3, 4, there's a good chance this time you go right through the base, which is just done. So that just says to me that we're all waiting for a leg. I, this is my methodology. In the Dow, we're waiting using the same type of uh, technique. We use it. We're waiting for the Dow, and I'll go to the Dow cash right now, which is trading uh, the futures only up a fraction. So I'll go to the cash at a peak C. If it, it should go to a four thousand, uh, forty thousand and fifty two level to make a leg D. And the moment it does that, it says, okay, you've achieved everything here from the buy signal to the buy mode. You can go higher, but this is where other things can happen. Be prepared. So I'm just saying that now. My, 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 as the rule I'm looking at here is wait for the D. It should come. You can get a peak C1, C2 where it just fails. That's a possibility. But most importantly, um, we have remained long. We've got a strategy that says if certain, certain things happen, we'll look at the short side. You've got to wait for those things to happen. Meantime, you've got NVIDIA and the semiconductors. This, this week, I suspect there's some internal strength 
and we'll see in the next couple of days just if it's able to rally almost to the all-time all high. But that to me is a clue. And look at bonds. If bond yields start to go uh, up again, the hold, then you've got a bunch of aspects that are saying, hey, you know, a little oversold here in many of the indices. We could have a bit of a pullback, a bit of a rest. That's kind of what I'm anticipating. But you've got to wait for each each. A particular step to unfold. So with that said, I'm saying have a wonderful rest of the day and stay tuned. You've got Tommy coming up and great program here at TFNN. Have a wonderful day.